Hey there, I'm Alice Baxter. An update of the business news for you this hour now. Facebook is making headlines again over its corporation tax. It paid just over £4,000 last year, despite pulling in £105 million in revenues from its UK arm. But it also made a loss of £28 million after paying out big time to more than 360 staff members in a share bonus scheme. That's around £96,000 per person. Facebook says it's compliant with UK tax law and will continue to grow its business. Here. Pensions are in the spotlight with the government saying people can make a one-off payment to top up their state pot in order to get an extra £25 a week. It's open to existing pensioners and those who will reach the state age before April 2016. The government says it could be particularly useful for the self-employed or anyone who hasn't yet built up a significant pension pot. And the Anglo-Swiss mining giant Glencore is selling two of its copper mines in Australia and Chile. It's all an attempt to reduce its £19.5 billion worth of debt created when it took over Extrata two years ago. Shares in the Hong Kong and London listed company have been incredibly volatile of late, down by 55% at one point earlier in the year. Last week, the company said it would cut 500,000 tonnes of zinc production. That's around 4% of global total supply. Now, have you ever been the victim of a scam, whether it's a phony prize draw or accidentally buying fake tickets or dodgy electrical goods? Well, if so, you're not alone, because according to the National Trading Standards Boards, which have just published their inaugural consumer harm report, over £13 million was lost to mail scams alone over the year, and they managed to prevent a massive £252 million worth of attempted fraud. Well, Lord Toby Harris chairs the National Trading Standards Board, and he joins me live now. Um, Lord Harris, many thanks for joining me here on the programme. So your organisation helped over £250 million worth of frauds, prevented them, uh, prevented rogue traders uh, from uh, attacking both businesses and normal consumers. That's a huge amount. This is clearly a very big problem. I think it's an enormous problem. And what we're finding is that not only do these scammers target vulnerable elderly people uh, and, and people who um, uh, are easy to con. But of course they're not only doing that, but they're also undermining legitimate businesses who operate in their local areas. So this is really bad news all round. And what we've got to try and do is get a grip on this and make sure that people are protected. Because when we look at the mail scams in particular, uh, they seem to... Uh Victims tend to be an average age of around 74, typically losing more than £1,000 in a year. As you say, these do seem to be some of our most vulnerable members of society. And I think the most shocking part of this is that often these, uh, the, these vulnerable members of society are on a sort of uh, victims list, a list of people who are, um, who, whose names are passed around from one scammer to another because it's known that they are vulnerable to being targeted in this way and what happens is their names get passed from one organisation to another. Uh, we, you, you come across uh, people who've almost signed away their life savings after a series of individual scams of this sort. So whilst uh, uh, the average may be a thousand pounds, there are some people whose lives are completely destroyed, their life savings uh, removed from them, uh, and of course the psychological and emotional consequences of that are devastating. Now Lord Harris, in your report rather worryingly, you also identify seven emerging threats. Well, that's right. Um, what we're seeing is that when there are government schemes, for example, for the Green Deal or for solar panels, um, these people uh, capitalise on it and tell people, oh, you're entitled to all this money from the government, just sign here and give us some money. Of course, the service may not materialise and you certainly don't get the government money. Um, or the changes in the pension arrangements. We're expecting all sorts of scammers to come out of the woodwork, tell people they've got special deals here and so on. Uh, the, the other thing that's started to happen is people are getting telephone calls, unwanted telephone calls, from people saying they're from the telephone preference organisation, the organisation which protects you from unwanted calls, saying, ah, oh, there's now a charge for this service, you need to pay for it. However, we can also install a piece of equipment that will screen out unwanted calls. Again, equipment which doesn't work and where the vulnerable person concerned ends up paying over the odds for it. Yeah, all very helpful uh, advice there. Lord Toby Harris, Chairman of the National Trading Standards Board. Many thanks. That's all the time that we've got for On Business this hour. Back to you both. Thank you, Alice.